Good morning, Europe. Buongiorno, Italia. Good morning, Switzerland. <laughs> Good day, America and Africa. Good evening, Asia, Oceania, Australia. Magandang gabi, Pilipinas. Today, January 22, we celebrate the 101 birthday of Kara Lubick, the foundress of the Focolare in which I am a member, I'm a Focolarino. And in these recent days, we have seen uh, some dramatic moments in the United States and all over the world, wherein there is a threat on the freedoms and democracy of, of people, of nations. I wish to share with you a reflection which I wrote after our Philippine Peaceful Nonviolent Revolution in 2001. Uh, we call it EDSADOS, uh, led by Cardinal Sin of Manila and Corazon Aquino. And this made uh, Gloria Arroyo uh, uh, as the president of our nation in 2001. But it was a beautiful moment because we were able to change uh, a situation which was something we, we can say uh, a political problem through a peaceful means, huh? through a non-violent peaceful protest by praying the rosary, by celebrating the mass together and in being together huh? as a people huh? wanting to change the course of our history. And I wish to offer this reflection to show how the Mother of God, Mary, has been very pivotal or very important in the history of my nation. I wrote this reflection uh, 20 years ago, also after the Ed Sados. I entitled this uh, reflection as I understood Mary when I stood under Ed's shrine. It was Tuesday evening, January 16, 2001. I have just visited some friends in Santa Mesa and Makati City in Metro Manila. I was feeling serene and joyful that evening. An inner sense tells me that something great would happen in one of these days. When I arrived home, my family was tuned in to Radio Veritas regarding the impeachment trial of the president then who was Estrada. It was when the senators were giving speeches after which they would cast a vote for or against the opening of an envelope that might probably convict the president on charges of bribery and graft and corruption. It was a fateful night indeed when the majority of the senators voted no to the envelope's opening I really felt bad and sad uh, to, uh, to, such, to calm down my emotion against a trial which I had hoped would stand for truth. I took a walk around my small barrio in Makati City while clutching my rosary in my hand, silently invoking God's help for my beloved country. I turned back home. My brother was still tuned in to Veritas. Thereafter, he told me that the Cardinal is now calling on the people to go to Ed's shrine to make vigil until this immorality in the government ends. At once, I woke up my sister, a catechist, and told her of the Cardinal's call. After dressing up quickly, the two of us left for Ed's shrine, leaving in the house my elder brother, who was busy nursing my sick mother. When we arrived at Ed's we were greeted with a noise barrage and people were angry. Along the way, I had a casual talk with a woman who could no longer hold back her dismay at the situation. She was already at the situation of cursing the 11 senators who voted no. My intention in going to Edsa was to heed, uh, to pray and make vigil in accordance with the cardinal's call. As we waited through the people, it was a sea of people. My sister and I got separated from each other. I positioned myself under the flyover where I could behold the imposing image of our Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Edsa. 
My sister, however, went inside the shrine. She was lucky to hear the speeches of Cory and of the cardinal inside the shrine. Oh, outside the shrine, I could hear the incessant roars of the crowd and violent honking of cars. Oh, good thing my sister went back to me, telling me to move up the shrine. On an eleva elevated platform, I could see that more and more people were coming. I heard the spontaneous jingles chanted by the people. I also heard the vehement tirades of politicians and leaders of cause-oriented groups. While I was looking at the statue of the Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Edsa, I was asking deep within, Mary, what do you feel at this moment? In my imagination, assuaged by my emotions, I felt that among us, Mary stood praying and listening to the pains and hurts of each of the speaker. I knew that she was listening and sympathetically understanding the emotional curses and jingles which were held against Estrada and the so-called 11 traitors. I felt that Mary understood even the negative ways the people were expressing themselves because she was one with their people in their quest for justice and truth. Mary was standing with us indeed. I was so certain of this truth during those four days of vigil. During those days, a beautiful picture of Mary dawned on me. It was a picture of the crucifixion, wherein Mary stood by the foot of the cross. Then I understood that at Calvary, Mary must, was faced with the greatest injustice, when the embodiment of beauty, truth, justice, peace, unity, and love was helplessly crucified, betrayed, and abandoned. But Mary was there showing her support and love by standing at the foot of the cross, not out of anger, but out of love for her son no? and care for humanity, which constantly turns it back, its back from God. Then afterwards, she embraced the blooded body of her son. When I was in prayer at Edsa, I felt the same way as that of Mary. I knew I was standing for truth and justice as a nation bled over disunity, poverty, and evil in the hands of her leaders. I was still willing to stand with my people as long as the immorality in the government was wiped out. In the literal, literal sense, I understood Mary as she stood at the foot of the cross. Many moments during the momentous days of Exodus were spent standing because there were limited spaces on which one could sit down. Never, nevertheless, while standing at the foot of the cross, Mary carried a certain hope because she believed in the resurrection of the third day. After three days of stand-up, the military and the police withdrew their support from the president. That was the final blow on the head of the snake, which was masking himself in his histrionic love for the poor. That moment, I felt so jubilant I went home on, on foot, praying the glorious mysteries in thanksgiving and so much joy. On my way home, I looked up at the stars, bright and wonderful, beautiful beacons of hope for my country. Now I understood Mary very deeply. She was a real revolutionary. Indeed, the Cardinal of Manila was right. Ed says the victory of the Immaculate Heart. For Mary always believes that the promise made to her will be fulfilled, even in the face of the greatest injustice. Ed Sados taught me very powerfully to remain standing by the cross, even if the resurrection would take some time to manifest itself. For inevitably, the resurrection will come as one stands in faith, love, and courage. This is the law of God, which is reflected in the course of nature. Just as in every suffering embraced, a new joy comes out. Just like a woman who immediately forgets the pangs of giving birth at the sight of her newborn baby. Just like the, that every after darkness comes the light. And just like after winter begins the spring. In Edsados, a giving birth happened to our nation. As in every new experience, a realization is engendered. Thus, with Edsados, we are expected to become a better people. Though I understood that we should actively remain standing under the cross, vigilant in prayer and love, for indeed glory and joy will come afterwards. 
now adds as President Arroyo paraphrased it, is no longer a geographical thing. It is already an idea, a principle, reflecting the struggle of humanity for the cause of truth, justice, freedom, and peace. I do liken El Senao to Assisi, a land blessed because of St. Francis of Assisi. It is because of the faith and love of Francis that is, Assisi is now a place where dialogue among world religions and peace summits are held. It is also a place reflect, reflecting the grandeur of nature and the compelling reason for taking care of God's gifts occasioned by Francis' love for Mother Earth. Edsa is now comparable to Assisi because on both places, God continuously walks. Like in Assisi as in Edsa, Mary's Magnificat was explicitly manifested not only once but twice in 1986 and 2001, and many small and simple miracles obtained by the people's devotion and love for Mary are continuously wrought through the intercession of Our Lady of Edsa. Cardinal Sin said that Edsa would again create ripples around the world, just like in 1986, because the struggles that we fought for with the love and faith in Edsa are of universal significance, which concerns the whole of humanity. Truly, Mary's Magnificat works not only in the Philippines but also throughout the whole world. Elsa is our contribution, our significant contribution to Mary's dream of putting the mighty from their thrones and sending the, um, the rich empty-handed. Elsa is our way of proclaiming the greatness of the Lord. Until now, the call of the Cardinal reverberates in my mind. Stay in Edsa. Remain in Edsa. It is the, safe, the safest place. It is a holy ground. I hope we will not waste this visitation of God huh, that happened in our nation. The Edsa revolutions. The two Edsa. The two Edsas. They are very important. And I hope we return and return every now and then to those moments and to learn from what happened in the past and not to allow it again to happen. Mary, help us in this quest for justice, truth, and peace. Ciao. So please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will be sharing more of my reflections in the coming, in the next videos that I will be making.